are about to enter the wacky world of Dr. Morgans. The more gossipron electro instant people machine. A creation long awaited by the masterminds of science. And I, Morgus the Magnificent, humbly offer it to the betterment of mankind. Starring Sid Noel as Dr. Morgus. Co-starring Dan Barton, the reporter. Gene Tesloff, the new Mata Harry. Lieutenant Bislaw! What do you want, Ignaz Bruno? Lieutenant Spichler, you will make yourself presentable and report for me in the courtyard immediately. We can actually dehydrate a living human being into powder and then bring him back to life again. Take me to him. The wacky world of Dr. Morgan's. Scientific and, to be specific, terrific. Ever since the beginning of time, the name of Dr. Borges has associated itself with science. My earliest ancestor was the first man of imagination. Striking two stones together, he created the spark that brought the first flame of fire to the world. And it was he who was the first man to experience the wonders of chemistry. People laughed at my great-grandfather when he vowed to become the world's first astronaut. Working with positive assurance of his scientific imagination and the will to reach the fringes of space. He became the first man in the world to orbit a barnyard. Let me join the fun mm, Dancing to the rhythm Of a Dixieland band Down in good old New Orleans Oh, down in good old New Orleans Get 
kind of restless. Got a lot of work to do up there. You can't expect a masterpiece in just a few minutes. Been four weeks, though. So got things to do. Look, I'm trying to do a good job. I just hope you can do just as good a job on me as I'm doing on you. Listen, you can rest assured the job I'm going to do on that nose will far exceed the trade-out value of that painting. Man, like I sure hope so. Okay, dog, it's, it's done. Oh, magnificent. <laughs> Truly magnificent. <laughs> Zelda's gonna love this. <laughs> Looks just like me. <laughs> oh, this is too much. I've got just a place to hang it, too. <laughs> Doc, can we go now? Oh. Doc! Oh, yeah. Can we go now? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, uh, look, uh, remember, don't tell anyone where I live because, uh, yeah, I don't pay rent, you know. <laughs> hey, let's go. Hey, Al. Watch my stuff, will you? Okay, right now. <laughs> that uh, this place will one day be a museum, but that's maybe hearsay. Oh, she's gonna love this, Red Nose. She's gonna love this. <laughs> yes. Zelda, dear. <laughs> Darling, I know you're asleep, but tomorrow morning we have a surprise for you. <laughs> oh, it's lovely. It's... Like, hey, Doug, what's with this? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, just stay away. Uh, this is Zelda, one of my patients. Uh, she came to me about six years ago for, you know, a little psychiatric treatment. Uh, I've been keeping her under constant hypnosis. So, uh... Six years? Well, like I say, it's a difficult case, but don't, don't worry about it. I know just where I'm gonna hang this. She's gonna really love all of this. <laughs> yes, sir, I have the nail all picked out. Right there. Oh, that's going to be perfect. Just... Ah! Ah! Don't, 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 don't ever look under things. <laughs> Not around here. <laughs> that's a little private affair there. Oh, this is going to be right. Yeah, that's good. Oh, that's Chopsley. Chopsley! That idiot. Get up! Get, get up! You're supposed to be watching Zelda. Got to watch that idiot like a snake. Say hello to Red Nose, uh, our new patient here. Say hello to him. Get ready for surgery. Got to watch him all the time. Now, you just uh, relax here a minute. Doug, don't he speak anything? Uh, no, no he, he doesn't talk. He doesn't talk. Well, like, uh, man, what's with that hood on his face? 
Oh, uh, well, uh, the Ford, uh, yeah, well, uh, well, I did a little minor plastic surgery on him a few years ago. Of course, it was a success, uh, but uh, he got to laughing one day uh, before it healed. And uh, his face caved in. Uh, you, you get right up here. His face caved in. Uh, yeah, but it, it, it was his fault. I mean, it was all his fault. You, you just sit right up here. Don't, don't, don't let that disturb you. We're just going to take a few measurements. Now, you just lay right here. Just remove the beanie. And uh, get right down to removing what it is that ails you, Red Nose. You're in very competent hands. I wish I had surgical powder. Uh... We won't need that anyway. Uh, hurry up with that nerve killer. Oh, yes. A uh, little uh, nerve reducer here, Red Nose. Just to calm your nerves, as I always say. Take it there. I knew it. I knew you made it too strong. Get it out of here. Just relax, relax. Blow your nose. Blow your nose. All right, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. All right, all right. Uh, uh, take it easy. Take, take it easy. Just relax. Completely relax. Completely relax. All right, now we're getting ready for the main part of the art. Don't, don't, don't look at that. Get that out of here, Charles Lee. Measurement. We're going to have to go in here for a little probing, of course, but I want to get the right... Uh... That's good. Let's see, i got to open that up a little bit. Look straight ahead, sir. It's good for your nerves. That's good. Now, right across the cranium. Hold that, Charles. Just about right position. Hold it right there, Charles Lee. Now, let me know when this hurts, Red Nose. Hey, that now, hurts. Doc, now. All right, that hurts? Yeah, now, now. Up with it, Charles. All right, carry the calipers quickly. <laughs> All right, now, that was uh, 700 millimeters divided by the derivative of 17 ohms. All right, marker, marker, quickly. Marker. <laughs> Yep, that's going to work right. That's going to work right. Right there. To here. Ah, uh, that's it, right here. That'll have to come over. And the same thing here. Right there. All right, Chosley. Hand me the number five needle. Let's relax, Red Nose. Let's relax. Okay, get me the serum. This is the number five needle now. This is just to put your head in a little dead state of affairs. Number five needles is my own invention. Uh, Doc, what do you mean by a number five needle? Well, you see, you just count up to five, and by that time you'll be out. All right, Charles. Okay, just relax now. This will just give you a little deadhead. <laughs> right on the marker. Okay, just a second now. Now, start counting. <laughs> okay, for papal surgery. Start One, two, three. Four. Get the uh, five, brace ready. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. 
that's all. That, uh, uh, Charles, uh, Charles, we get with the other, uh, the other. Uh, wait. Uh, we we uh we didn't put enough of the serum in the. Uh, that's all. It's uh, we need another needle, Charles. Lay the uh, psychological. Uh, just another shot. This one will put you off. Oh. Pencils, the music. Yeah, it's the music sets. <laughs> music my typewriter isn't making. Uh, music that old bubble had down at the city desk is breathing down my neck. Kind of short of material, huh? <laughs> you are so right. Let me tell you one thing, chum. If you work behind this bar just one night like I do, and hear some of the conversations I get in on, you could fill up ten newspapers. Well, you're probably right. If it wasn't for you, I never would have known about this guy Morgus. By the way, uh, what'd you ever do with that story I gave you about Morgus's girlfriend, Zelda? I followed it through. I wrote it up, gave it to the city desk, and almost lost my job. They wouldn't print it, huh? Well, they didn't believe me. They classified it as psychotic hogwash. They said it didn't come under the heading of uh, honest journalism. Hmm. You know something, Sid? I have such a feeling that this guy, Morgus, is on a, a line somewhere between lunacy and pure genius. Yeah. Well, if you ask me, I'd say some sort of bohemian screwball. He's cheating the Jefferson Nuthouse out of a likely candidate. No, 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 he's only half nuts. And whether, whether magnificent or not, he's a strongly motivated individual. But when he starts to do something, you can't stop him. All right, now we've got it in perfect condition here. Let's find the mark. All right, put it up there. Straight down into the mark. To the left. I mean the right. I mean the left. That's good. <laughs> now I'll take over. Hold it right there on the mark. Hold it right there. I think we, we probed far enough. Hold this, hold this. Carefully. That's perfect. We ought to be about right in here. Just about hitting the epithoid. Okay. Get me the calipers quickly. Go to the... All right. We should be just about into the sinus cavity. <laughs> right on the mark! <laughs> uh, remember, Chosley, genius is like rain, and tonight it is pouring. Yeah? Let me tell you one thing, buddy boy. Somebody better stop this guy. Do you know what he's done now? He's invented a machine that will turn people into dust and bring them back again. Yeah, that's not all. It's rumored around the quarter that he's looking for likely candidates. And uh, knowing some of these characters, I'll bet he gets them. 
Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, what are you... What are you trying to tell me? That he has a... He has a machine that... That turns people into dust and brings them back again? You know something? I believe you. This is Morgus. I believe you. I don't know why, but I believe it. Do you know that... If this is true, this could be the greatest story of the century? I'll see you later, sir. Wait a minute. Where are you going? Well, to the Seven Candles. Where else? <laughs> okay, go get him, Winchell. <laughs> On right now, my friends, a brand new show on stage right now, gentlemen. That Tony show on first, recommended by the world renowned. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here you are, fellas. On right now, man. Twelve beautiful girls right up here. No cover charge, no minimum. <laughs> they said it couldn't be done. Success, Chompsley. Always success. Red Nose will never know what it is to uh, sneeze again. <laughs> you, you're the cause of that. I told you to get all the germs out of here. Pick up something. Keep moving. Get out of my way. You're all right, aren't you? Doc, Doc I, I can't breathe. Oh, you, you, you don't have to breathe. I gotta breathe, Doc. Uh, I fixed it. I fixed it. I can't breathe, Doc. Uh, get, get the oxygen. Oxygen unit. Quickly, quickly. Oxygen mobile. We have a mobile oxygen unit. Just, just relax. Oh, it's a success. Don't worry. Ah, here we go. <laughs> uh, you hold this right here. Hold this right here. That's it. How's that? How's that? <laughs> Oh, oh, that's a lot better, Doc. All right, you just keep this puppy. Go get the ambulance ready. We'll have you over with the seven candles. We'll show them. And don't forget to check those brakes on that ambulance. Idiot. All right, you hold this right down here. I'm going to cross you here. That's good. There. Now you just keep that up, and you'll never have to worry about breathing anymore. Let's go. Let's, let's see if we can pick up the damage. Watch a step here. This way. Keep it going. Watch a step. Keep pumping, keep pumping, keep pumping. Uh, turn around. All right, keep it going. Uh, wh where's this beanie? The beret. You've got it. Give me that beret, or you don't eat. All right. Might catch a cold. Operation's a complete success. All right. Very easy now. Down here. Out here. Easy, easy. That's good. Help me up here. Help me up. That's it. That's it. All right, close it. Drive careful. No, 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 you don't, Pencils. No. What do you mean? No, 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 you don't, Pencils. This is a public dump, isn't it? Uh, well, well, wait a minute. Don't, don't call this joint no dump. Uh, we're a nice clean place here. We, we ain't got no room for guys like you that write all them fancy words about them, but my, my kind of people. I didn't know you could read and write. Well, you... Well, you... Do you, Doc? Just give me the word, Doc, and I'll throw the bum out of here. Hold up, hold up here. No, no one should be evicted from 
from any place in which he chooses to place his cadaver. <laughs> we welcome Mr. Joseph Pencils McCain, even though at times he appears to be a man of little conscience. <laughs> Bring us some more espresso, Bob. Uh, Doc. Doc, I'd like to apologize for not getting that sensational story of you and Zelda in the columns as yet. But I'm working on it. I don't see how it could take three years. Three years? Has it been that long? Well, the, the truth of the matter is, Doctor, there's something missing. Oh, I know the way you've kept Zelda young and beautiful is a story in itself, but... Well, I should think it is. But we've got to find something more sensational to top it, which I'm sure you can produce. Now, for example, Doc, if you could take me to your laboratory and I could see Zelda again, I'm sure you could elaborate on your own personal triumph. Well, I guess <laughs> it, uh, it has been uh, about three years since you've seen uh, Zelda. <laughs> yes, perhaps you should be convinced that she will remain young and beautiful. <laughs> yes, we'll do that right now. We'll take care of that. Oh, oh, uh, Champ, uh, something unexpectedly came up. Uh, I have to feed Zelda, you see. Uh, uh, give the coffee to some of my friends and uh, charge it to my somewhat overdue account, you know. <laughs> uh, Champ, I don't have a prescription for it anyway. <laughs> Isn't she beautiful? Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Ah, fantastic. She <laughs> hasn't changed a bit in three years. Hasn't changed a bit. Well, proves something, doesn't it? <laughs> the theory. Under constant hypnosis, there is no organic change in the human structure. Yes, but tell me, how long, how long can she remain in this cataclysmic trance? Well, uh, well, actually, no, this is not for the newspapers. Uh, about three weeks. See, uh, we're going to be married. Does she know about this? Does this look like we're faking? Say, that's really quite a ring. There must have set you back some. Well, uh, actually, it's uh, from one of my very grateful former patients. Uh, <laughs> very wait, lovely. Wait a minute. What? Where's the band? Oh, uh... Well, I had a little minor surgery. Uh, it, it's around the bone. You see, it holds the, the uh, stone. <laughs> Actually, you see, she'd be very upset if she lost it, you know. Got to think of those things. Very expensive. <laughs> oh, wait, you haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> oh, I'm giving her this for a wedding present. <laughs> Rather ingenious. <laughs> you, you. Well, where's the syringes? Huh? Oh, yeah. Booty, uh, booty. <laughs> don't, don't overfeed her tonight, Trops, Leah. She doesn't look too well. Here. Ah, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> this is not for the prying eyes of the press. <laughs> Besides, the operating principle is much too complex for the layman mind. Okay. Okay, Doc. I just thought it was something in which I could interest the symposium. The, uh, symposium, uh, oh, what, what symposium? Oh, the International Science Symposium. They investigate new ideas and research. And since, as you know, this is the geophysical year, they meet in New York next month at the United Nations building. Well, I merely thought that if your idea had to, I might be able to arrange a presentation. Uh, uh, science symposium, uh, geophysical, yeah. Look, yeah, uh, look, Doc, they probably wouldn't even be interested in your invention. Now, just a minute, Mr. Smart Guy McCain. Those renowned idiots should pay to see what I have under those wraps. Huh. Come here, feast your eyes on true magnificence. Uh. <laughs> the Morgusatron Electro Instant People Machine. A creation long awaited by the masterminds of science. And I, Morgus the Magnificent, humbly offer it to the betterment of mankind. Wait a minute. To 
Do I understand you to say that you can dehydrate people and then bring them back? <laughs> Not bring them back. They haven't been anywhere. I merely uh, dehydrate them, dissemble the tissues, hold them intact, restore them. <laughs> In other words, instant people. <laughs> have you, uh, have you ever tried this in a human being? Well, uh, well not exactly, uh, uh, but, well, I have done this with plant life, uh, yes, and, and, uh, and with, uh, with, with Clyde. Clyde? Yes, uh, Clyde. Jocelyn! Get Clyde. <laughs> That's it. I'm going to take a vascular electro reading. Watch it, watch it. <laughs> Perfect. Well, that's about it. We're all set for production here. Well, you better step out the way. A little, uh, radiation, you know. Radiation? Yeah, a lot of radioactivity here. Uh, of course, uh, I'm deradiated. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> oh, here comes Copsley now. <laughs> okay, Klein. You ready for departure? <laughs> now, listen, I want you to place him straight into the harmonic intake tube, okay? Last time you threw him in this way, he got out on us. Don't let it happen again. Watch this. <laughs> Go ahead. Hit it. Just a matter of seconds. Oh, oh. Here it is. Blonde. Does that mean that we'll, we'll never see poor Clyde alive again? Oh, ye of little faith, the dwarf comprehension. <laughs> Hurry up with that, Chopsley. When this restorator gets operated, you'll see some real action out of here. That's good, that's good. Oh, out the way. Let's see here. <laughs> Just keep your eye on everything. All right, that's fine. Now the suspected remains of uh, our dear friend Clyde. That's all. I can adjust that. Would you like to get in a machine? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. No, I'm convinced. I, uh, I wouldn't mind to see Chopsley in there, though. I'm just thinking of the faces of the symposium when they see your invention. Doctor. Doctor, you may consider yourself an honored member of the International Science Symposium at the United Nations. Yeah. 
cotton picking line, McCain. What do you mean the greatest story of the century? This psychotic hogwash won't even get past the old man's desk. You know. Now, now, wait a minute, Chuck. This is a this is a letter, not a story. Now, come on, read it again. Well, I don't have to read it again to know what you need is a head shrink, buddy boy. Listen, that pirate's alley gang is going to take you over completely before this is over. And those beatniks down there, man, they don't know fact from fancy. They're way out. But get it, McCain. No, 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 wait a minute, Chuck. Here, can't you see how I'm slanting this up? I'm making a, a factual treatment of it and sending it to those geophysical boys in that big glass building in New York City. Look, it's, it's just not the great story you think it is. It just won't work. Well, well, you missed the point, Chuck. Don't you understand? Look, if I can, if I can get a crackpot like Dr. Dr. Alexander Morgus admitted to the International Science Symposium. That's my story, not the invention itself. My man, that'd, that'd be picked up by every newspaper in the country. And I'll write it like a Texas Bronco bus. Now, that's not bad. Not bad at all. Maybe it's worth a try. Well, it's not only worth a try, it's worth a toast. Instant coffee for instant people. All right, gentlemen. You've all had a chance to study your assignments. Now, it's been agreed we will accept Dr. Hugo's application to exhibit his synthetic brain machine, which purportedly is able to see, hear, and reproduce. Dr. The chair recognizes uh, Dr. Oppenhagen. Doctor, I would like to uh, recommend a 20-minute uh, demonstration by Dr. Harry Janeski on his cytogenerator machine in the study of mammalian cells. All right, Doctor. We'll have time for that, I'm quite sure. Uh, gentlemen, we can use possibly two more demonstrations, so if you'll please check your assignments and very carefully and then address the chair for submitting. Thank you. from the building when I faint. This is an order. When you faint? When you faint? Yes, idiot, when I faint. You will tell them it's my heart condition. Oh! Oh! Does he suffer from heart trouble? Oh, I know. It has never happened before. <laughs> there, gentlemen. There. Let's get him to the lounge. I am better now. Thank you, Doctor. Fostic here will show me to my hotel. his exercises, how far did you walk? Get up here, Billy, please. Holy Mary, chop, please. Let's get the exercises over with. Two, three, four, five. We did very well. <laughs> that's enough, that's enough, that's enough. All right. Now, when you get on the moon, you know what I told you about, uh, about hitting the spaceman in case you got in any trouble, huh? All right, take this and let's see what you can do. That's it! 
answer. Harder, harder. Ha, ha, ha. Terrific. Very good, but that's perfect. That's perfect. Jostly, stop the animal. All right. Now, this is a very important weapon. The one you're going to get in launching will be real. Let's see what you can do. Hold it there, hold it there. That's good. That's good, that's good. That's good. All right. What is this? What did I do to be shot? Please, please, what is this? Guard, tell Marshal Spitzfoot to report to me in the courtyard. Be quick about it! You, where is Lieutenant Spiegler? No, sir. Lieutenant Spiegler! Lieutenant Spichler! What do you want? That's Bruno. Lieutenant Spichler, you will make yourself presentable and report to me in the courtyard immediately. say that I do, sir. My men are well trained for the operation as the king planned it. I could hardly entertain the thought of changing his plans without his orders. Continue, Marshal Schmitzlow. How can I continue when I don't even know the reason behind this change of plan? Oh, no, no! Oh, the shoulder blade. 
place. Kill! My visit to America was even more successful than I ever anticipated. I was uh, able to uncover one of America's greatest secret weapons in history. It was a machine invented by a doctor, Momus Alexander Morgus, one of America's secret scientists. He is so secret, he is not even named in the uh, Geophysical International Registrar. <laughs> what does this weapon do? Yeah. Oh, good question, Schmitzlu. <laughs> this machine... <laughs> well, uh, this machine that Dr. Morgus has invented, uh, it is capable of breaking the sound barrier of nuclear energy, so to speak. Hardly an innovation, Excellency. Wait a minute, Schmitzlu. This machine is capable of reducing the human form to powder and restoring it completely without damage to the tissues of the body. What has this to do with the king's plans? This, my dear Schmitzelu, changes the king's plans. What does the king say when he hears of this? He must hear nothing of it until Operation USA is successfully completed. Understood? Not quite, Excellency. My orders are directed from the king. And my orders are directed from Marshal Shu. You will both take your orders from me in the absence of the king. Furthermore, I am taking over the entire operation. And the entire responsibility. And the entire responsibility, Marshal Spitzlow. Our first objective is to get this Dr. Morgus into the country. This will not be a simple matter. Mona, you will be the attractive bait for our brilliant scientist. We'll prepare at once for your trip to America. You, Schmitzel, will accompany her. Here are your orders. You will follow them and carry them out to the letter. Remember, I am responsible. I want you to watch Spitzlow and Lieutenant Spiegler. Sooner or later. Do you want a straight jacket or do you want to go quiet? No, 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 get him out of this. The Geophysical Commission wants another copy of my letter. For a letter of submittal in this matter is missing from our files and believed to have been stolen by a foreign government. It'd be good enough to send us a copy that we may appraise the importance of the theft. It's getting better all the time, I huh, check. It's not getting better. It's not even a story. It's a calamity. It's a, it's a blazing Frankenstein. You self-appointed pigeon, you? Charles the First. Always the defeatist. Listen to me, McCain. This is a boomerang that could easily knock you off your well-appointed bar stool and for the rest of your life, you hear me? Believe me, Mr. Pencil, smart guy, McCain. Oh, come on, Charlie. It's only a, a letter I wrote to help a friend. A letter to help a friend? Listen, McCain, don't you know that's when everybody gets in trouble when they write letters to help friends? You better forget this whole thing. Believe me, you better get lost. Get out on Bourbon Street somewhere. And I'll, uh, I'll tell everybody you're going to Patagonia. <laughs> Take your mind off your troubles.
here. Uh, try an American lighter. How did you know it was a foreign mate? Well, I collect them. I have a whole closet. <laughs> no, I spent four of the best years of my life collecting lighters. And one I remember particularly was given to me by a lovely little French girl. As a matter of fact, you know something? You remind me a little bit of her. Oh, but I am not French, Mr. Uh, pencils. Just call me Pencils. Oh, Mr. Pencils. I doubt if we've ever met before. My name is Mona. Speak. Seventeen. Eighteen thousand. Nineteen thousand. Twenty thousand pounds of pressure. How does he look? He looks good. <laughs> That's all we need. That's all we need. <laughs> That'll get him as far as Venus. <laughs> Don't you worry, Billingsley. Don't you worry. It's just a matter of weeks before we'll have you on the planet Venus. <laughs> You'll be my representative. <laughs> Don't you worry a bit. <laughs> I think we could take a break now. Uh, besides, it's uh, time for uh, Zelda and I to have a little siesta, you know? Get her ready. <laughs> What is this big story? Well, this Dr. Morgus has invented an instant people machine. An instant people machine. He can actually dehydrate a living human being into powder and then bring him back to life again. You don't really expect me to believe this, do you? <clears throat> Then take me to him. Take you to him. Uh, we'll go behind him. I better let you see what you'll be in for. <laughs> Look, would you still like to meet him? Yes, I would like to meet him. Okay. Okay, there's uh, nothing like doing it right now. First, it's the uh, third gable on the left. I try to keep you looking well. I, I know you're much prettier than other girls, and perhaps you could do a better job at You'll appreciate what I've done when you come out of this trance in just a matter of weeks.
got some new perfume I've been working on. I, I may be able to patent it. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to ask you about that. <laughs> Just uh, put your hand here like we usually do, and uh, just think about me. That, that's the important thing. <laughs> oh dear. Once again, we're together. My very brief moments are, are so thrilled to me. <laughs> oh, to feel you, to touch your skin. And I know how you're thrilled to be next to me. Who was it that said love? Love is a devotion of the heart. <laughs> and my heart. <laughs> my heart. Get you out of here. Wait for me in the car. You didn't have to hit him so hard, Schmitzi. I think you really mean it. Come on, speaker, let's go. Let's get it over. Now, now, the time has come. Oh, I know you love to dance. Yes, I, I'm really in the mood. <laughs> All right, Chancellor. You know, that's your favorite. That's your favorite. Cha cha cha. Clever, that's something new I learned. Cha cha cha. Somebody's coming, somebody's coming. Get her out of here. Look, look, look busy, look busy, look busy. Mona Esther Kirby, of Microthania. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Countess uh, Esther Kirby. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I am here to congratulate you on your wonderful machine. My, uh, my machine. You, you don't mean my instant faithful machine? <laughs> yes, Doctor. I am representing the science symposium, and I have brought with me their official certificate of acceptance which I am very happy to present to you. I have also their official instructions from the chairman of the committee concerning departure. First, all expenses to and from destination will be paid by the committee. Second, you will plan to leave at once for Microvania, where you will give a preliminary demonstration before Dr. Ignaz Bruno and his committee. Dr. Bruno shall furnish all live subjects for the demonstration. <laughs> well, well, didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you the name of Morgus would live in science? <laughs> the genius has been manifested. Work, work, and it shall reward you. That was my philosophy. <laughs> those idiots, those idiots at the university who ostracized me years ago. <laughs> Now's the time. They'll come running like leeches. <laughs> Doctor, we must plan to leave at once. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, well, uh, we're ready here. I'm just uh, giving a few instructions here. Yeah, everything will be fine, yes. <laughs> we're ready to leave. Just get my... What a catch of cold. Uh, I'll play uh, 
her men would take care of Zelda while we were away, and uh, if she should happen to come out of the spell, uh, just don't let her out of the house, you know, and watch Billingsley and everything. Oh, yes, show the men how to get the machine down the secret way, you know, give them a lot of help there. Doctor, you will have time to change. Uh, change? Uh, oh, yes, change. Oh, uh, 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 no, no, uh, it won't be necessary. I, I keep the same pavilaments all year round. <laughs> Good luck, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know the importance of our first mission. Once group number one is established in the United States, group number two into Russia, group number three into France, group number four into England. We are one of the smallest countries in the world, but soon we will be one of the richest. How? Once our group is established behind the country, the bargaining will begin and the money will flow! Keep in mind that these countries spend an average of seven billion dollars a year on espionage! Half of this can be ours. How? We will hire out to do their work for them. It's that simple. Microvania! The espionage capital of the world! As you know, our previous plan required flying in at treetop levels so as to avoid radar. But this is dangerous, even at midnight. We could not think of a more positive way. But now we have it, gentlemen. And it is I, Ignaz Bruno, who discovered it. It is a machine. Yes, yes, a machine invented by a Dr. Marcus. This machine is capable of dissolving a human being to powder. Well, buddy boy, if you can put up $600 of your own money, I guess I can afford a little of the action. <laughs> hey, you're making a wise investment, Chuck. You now own a part of one of the wildest stories to ever hit the American press. I don't know, there's one thing still bothers me. What in the world is a little country like Microvania? What do they want with Morgus and his wacky machine? Well, when I get back from Microvania, I'll let you know. I may even bring Mona back with me. Mona? You know, that's one thing I can't understand. How in the world can a dame play you for a stooge and she still keeps your heart going pitter-patter all the time? I always said it would take a blow on the head to flip you, but this is ridiculous. It may sound strange, Chuck, but when that girl kissed me, she... she really acted as if she meant it. I can't believe she didn't. Well, I better go if I'm going to catch that next flight. Oh, oh. Be sure and give the old man a reason for my absence. Oh, okay. Don't sweat it, lover boy. Macrovania, doctor. This way, please. So, I have been betrayed. One of you, I sent word to the king. It says here the firing squad will be active. If anything goes wrong with our plans. You forget whose brain it was that originated the idea of selling espionage from one country to the other. It was I, Ignaz Bruno! Listen carefully, traitors. Ignaz Bruno is not going to the firing squad. With all of you are. As soon as I return from my successful espionage invasion of the United States. And I will lead the second group of agents myself into the Soviet Union, and into England, and into France. And Bruno's espionage internationale will be in business. Stay here and wait for the king to return from his mountain bomb shelter. 
But Bruno and his men are leaving. Speakla remains. You two men. Get out! What is this I hear? You and the newspaper man. What is to happen to the security of Microvania when you confront openly with this. this American? My life is my own, Bruno. Your life belongs to Microvania. And to me! What is it, Lamke? The experiment is ready to start, Your Excellency. Are we uh, ready, Doctor? Oh, <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> well, uh, everything seems to check out according to Hall there. <laughs> uh, one little question here. Uh, I still don't understand why you didn't bring my uh, restoration machine with this, you see, because I'm going to need it for the demonstration, won't I? And not only that, I, I can only conduct half of the experiment here, you see. That's perfectly well, all right, Doctor. We'll run the men through the machine here, ship them for your laboratory in New York, and you can assemble them there. After that, it is only a short trip to the science symposium in New York City. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> Well, then, uh, I don't see any reason why we can't get started. <laughs> oh, uh, one other thing here, Doctor. Just step over here. Uh, you see, this uh, receptacle will have to be held under here, so I'll need a small receptacle to catch the very intricate particles. <laughs> <laughs> We don't need a receptacle that large for such a small shipment. What, what, what are they, they here for? Uh, they are your subject, Doctor. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> How many? Uh, uh, just 300. 300? <laughs> well, uh... Don't tell me the machine can't handle that many. Oh, sure, sure. 300, uh, yeah. Oh, gee, I've been through there that many times myself. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Well, we're ready to start. It's all checked out very well. <laughs> all right, all right, fellas. Uh, just relax and be yourselves. Now, doctor, you just keep an eye on me. Just step out of the way. There's a lot of high voltage here. Small tubes and all things like that. But I doubt. What? What's this? Can I keep it, please? Oh, well, yeah, I guess so. It'll dissolve. It's all right. Duck down. Head in. That's good. Lightly. And away you go. Now you're going to see a piece of action. <laughs> All we have to do is check the corneal pulse. <laughs> Always success when you speak with Dr. Morgus. Now, uh, well, we don't really need that, uh, Peter. Now, Doctor, you can just keep your eyes on the tube and when the uh, precious particles come out, uh, it's like we know. Here's Doctor! Doctor! Come quick, Rick! What? That's it. Come on, come on. Oh. Oh. Doctor, this is Lamke? The finest transmutation I've ever seen. Real human being. I mean, uh, excellent uh, specimen here. Oh, yes, sir. Just keep your eye on the tube.
keep your eye on that tube over there. Let me know when that box fills up. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Goodyear must have blown this thing up. let him destroy us. I had no other choice but to inform His Majesty. What could I do but stand by and watch him destroy 300 of our best men? Well, it's done. I wish I'd stayed in America, but I didn't realize. We all make mistakes. You should never have hit Mr. Pencils over the head as you did, Schmitzi. Pencils is so wonderful. I understand. But now we face serious trouble, Mona. It is serious, Mickey. If we wait for the king to come back, he'll have a shot. If that ridiculous machine brings those men back to life, Bruno will have a shot. I wouldn't doubt for what he left orders to have a shot while he's gone. What can we do? Could we get away? I'll try to think of something. You've got to get out of Microvania tonight. You can seek political asylum in America. But Bruno's on the boat with the men. They're leaving in the morning. Yes, yes, I know, but you'll fly. Schwitzler will show you the way. Now listen to me, darling. Go directly to New Orleans, check my arrival in the boat, and wait for me in the dock. Oh, Pencils, I love you so much. Now find Schwitzler at once. He'll show you the way. I will. I'll go right away. I don't believe it. No woman, no woman would ever leave me. You see, that's something you never did realize. <laughs> Any woman that ever came into the realm of my affections would never leave me. <laughs> You're kidding. 
You are kidding, aren't you, Jolly? I'd leave you here for a couple of days, and you mean to tell me you let her go off? You mean she ran off with that monkey? You're lying to me. You're lying to me. Idiot. box of sand. The insurance company gets off easy this time, huh? I'll call the receiver of the ship and we'll make it good. Oh, and Jerry, you better call one of those sand companies and have them haul the stuff away. Right, boss. Okay. Uh, hello. Hello. Of course, this is Morgan. Yeah, yeah, of course. Sir. Well, I left my number with you. You should know it. It is, it is.
P.S. 36 Elementary School for your stirring rendition. <clears throat> the momentous occasion has arrived. Another red letter day in our community. Your great city officials have worked hard through tireless hours to see this project completed. So we are here to pour the last yard of concrete, the mark the end of a job well done. We don't have time for a ticket. mustn't forget you taxpayers. After all, it was your money that built this great roadway. So we think that is only right and proper that this magnificent new boulevard should bear the name of People's Avenue. All right, all right, you fellas. Come on, break it up. Go on home. It's all over. Thank you. 